The following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Once again, it's Virginia, regular season champs of the ACC. Makes the pass left, instead fires up the three. It's official. The Cavaliers continuing to make stride. Tonight, the top-ranked Hoos travel to Louisville, a team desperate to punch their own ticket to the big dance. Does number one survive for week number four? Find out now on the ACC Network. The regular season winds down, and tonight in the ACC, it's the number one Cavaliers against the Louisville Cardinals here at the KFC Yum Center in a season that's been unlike any other in the history of Louisville basketball. You see where Virginia is, number one with a bullet in the conference. No doubt where they'll be in March, but what about Louisville? They could go a long way in determining their March fate tonight. And these two men in the backcourt, Kyle Guy and Quentin Snyder, put on a show the last time these two met, and they no doubt will play a major role tonight. Hi again, everyone. Tim Brando by my side, the G-Man, Mike Jeminski. And this Virginia team, it's just an amazing story. It truly is everything that's right about the college game. Well, and I think almost to love them, you really have to know basketball. And they are so connected on both ends of the floor. They play as one and uh, very unselfish and great leadership as well. This Louisville team on senior night trying to live in the moment. That's about all they can do. This is their first game back here since they brought the banner down after the sanctions from the NCAA. Well, Tim, you know what? It's senior night. Number one is in town. They're only thinking about this game, and it's going to be a special night for everybody. One time, in fact, where the millennial cohort really does come in handy for a young coach like Padgett here. When we come back, the lineups, the opening tip, it's the Ville. It's Virginia. It's next. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Gatorade, win from within. By your Carolina Ford dealers. And by Bojangles, it's bow time. Quentin Snyder, Anas Mahmoud, the two seniors that have gone through so much, enjoying the moment tonight. And uh, I know that means a great deal to you, G-Man, and your memories of a senior night. More on that coming up as you look at our food line starting lineups. Always important to know in that pack line defense how good and solid Salt Wil Wilkins really are, what they do to help Jerome, Guy, and Hall. King has been up and down of late. Be interesting to see how VJ size can help in the backcourt for Quinton Snyder, Spalding, Adele, and Mahmoud. The rest of that starting five. Our officials for tonight's game: Great Crew, Mike Eads, Jamie Lucky, and Bill Covington. A number of Final Fours among that trio. You know, it's funny, Tim, in talking to Dave Paget. Uh, you know, they got the ballot for first team, all ACC, and all defensive team, and he said, "Why don't I just write in?" all five Virginia starters <laughs> for the defensive team for the league. I love that. I do. It is hard to select one player, and traditionally a team that wins the league by four full games, which they may do, would certainly deserve one one guy on the all-ACC first team. That one does not fall in and out for Isaiah Wilkins. This is going to be a very deliberate game. I think Louisville will look to push and be a little bit more opportunistic, but look for a a lot of shots late in the shot clock for both teams. Louisville well aware that in this game you're limited in terms of possessions. That's just the way it goes against Virginia. The ball lost out of bounds by Guy. Hard to believe Tony Bennett's 48 years of age, but he is. Met him first when he was playing for his dad at Wisconsin Green Bay. Went on, of course, to do a marvelous job at Washington State after his dad decided to retire. Remarkable what he has accomplished three of the last five years in terms of the regular season. Now, of course, it's about getting to that vital Final Four to uh, really validate all that they've done with the Cavaliers. And this young man, David Padgett, inherited a situation unlike any other. Just days before the season and practice was getting underway, wisely he went after a couple of great assistants, one old, one young, 
Trent Johnson and Greg Paulus to help put his staff together. And I think Mike, he, I think he deserves to be the full-time head coach here. I really do. Uh, yeah, and that, that should have happened a long time ago, Tim. I agree, and our condolences to his family. Uh, off the court, he's been through so much. He's lost a brother-in-law to cancer and an uncle to cancer in the same year. And uh, we'll show you the, uh, we'll show you what the little players are wearing in tribute to that. Yeah. Um, there's the button that says family, and uh, it was the actually his idea. captain. His captains yeah. came to him in January, found out what he was going through. He didn't tell his team that, and they wanted to do something as a, as a unit. It says a lot about these young men, particularly with everything going on, all the noise around the Louisville program since the season got underway. Devin Hall, tough pass inside Wilkins, and he gets it to go. Yeah, they are they're just on both ends of the floor, so disciplined. Uh, they, they play as a unit. They play so unselfishly. That's why it's, you know, it's even hard to pick a first team all ACC. Like you said, it's only happened twice where the regular season champion hasn't had a first team all ACC player. Hall driving it inside and does get the whistle. The foul spotted. It looks like B.J. King picked it up. He's had a, he's been in a little bit of a slump lately. Uh, last three games only averaging six points a game, half of his average. But for a, a team that doesn't score big numbers, that's uh, that's a big hit. Look at that profile on Virginia, what they've done. And this has been consistent for many, many years now. You know what, Tim, is it funny? The first two years that Tony Bennett got here, they were in the 50s and 30s nationally. Yeah. Ever since that time, they've been a top 10 team, if not a number one team in that category. In my opinion, after watching them, this is the first time I've seen them live this year, Mike, but I think they've got more answers offensively than in the past. Spalding with the ball fade, got the big guy elevated. And Jack Salt picks up the foul. A little hoop and a little harm here. Well, well a, nice, a nice pump fake. Salt bites on it. And uh, the, the thing, I think Spalding is one of the more underrated guys on this team. I mean, he has been so solid all year long. And it, it is not, you know, it's not often that you see a guy, he's got 44 steals and 50 blocks. Terrific down the other end of the floor and has really found his scoring touch. Coming off a 12-point performance in that win on the road in Blacksburg, Louisville should be supremely confident, Mike, coming in tonight after that road win. Yeah, well, and they, you know, Tim, even as late as we are in this season, they could be the third seed or they could be the ninth seed. Yeah. So, you know, all these games as it's going to unfold through the weekend are just going to be incredible. All those matchups for Brooklyn coming up next week. The Akiti puts that one through. Wow, that was a tough shot. And you see, saw no double team and uh, you know, Dave Padgett ele electing not to with Mahmoud as good a shot blocker as he was, as he is. Ramadi the Akiti waiting for that double team that didn't happen. And there's a push. It'll go the other way. Uh, Spalding uh, that time. He, you know, he, he had good position, but tried to improve it a little bit. Picking up the foul right there, and uh, Isaiah Wilkins just only 6'7", a little undersized out there, but very strong. David Padgett having a nice conversation with Mike Eads up there at the top of your screen about that. He would prefer a looser whistle with his post play. Nice dish. Diakini is fouled. Diakite picks it up, taking it inside. Diakite. 5 3 our score, Virginia. And he'll go to the line. Yeah, he had some double figure scored early. Um, you know, more again, more of a, a defensive threat than anything. But uh, Diakite, an aggressive move, gets the whistle on that call. One man from Africa. Got a lot bigger and stronger. Spent a lot of time in the weight room during the offseason. A redshirt sophomore. But the thing is, and then, you know, Tony Bennett was talking to us, the guys who are redshirts, it gives them that extra year to get bigger, stronger, and learn the system on both ends of the floor. So a real advantage. And Diakite makes it a three-point game. Three minutes gone by. Here at the KFC Yum Center. Let me tell you, it's gonna, it may take Quentin Snyder a little while, while to work into this game. How about that one? A 
Lindell, a perfect lob into Mahmoud. Yeah, and that's, he's going to get a lot of his points around the basket, offensive rebounds, plays like that. But for these seniors out on the floor right now, this is a very emotional time. Pete flashes, goes to that jump hook baseline. Not much that Honest Mahmoud could do with that. Wow. Yeah, and that's in that, well, that last jump shot sets up the drive that time. Snyder. Well, this is a big night for him. One of the legends of the 502, Ballard High. And coming off a, a big time uh, game and win against Virginia Tech. So some momentum coming into this evening. Crowd starting to get behind them defensively. Well, you got to deal with him right now, Diakite is showing you all the versatility that he has in his offensive repertoire. He has uh, scored seven of the ten, already over, way over his average. Adele leaves it for Spalding. The finger roll on the baseline. The better is concerned. I mean, they won the game in Charlottesville, but this rematch uh, that Louisville was able to penetrate the lane against that pack line defense. Uh, he also knows when you're number one, it gets the attention of everyone. And an offensive foul. Diakite picks it up on the pick. The timeline of this soap opera season, allegations emerge that the operations director, Andre McGee, solicited escorts for Louisville players happened in October. Self-imposed sessions come in February. NCAA rules Louisville forced for, force to forfeit 123 wins, including the 2013 championship. The FBI investigation becomes public, alleging 100K given to the family of Brian Bowen. Patino fired by the Louisville Athletic Association, and the NCAA rejects the Louisville appeal, upholds the penalty, and the American flag there you see is where the 2013 banner once was. And these young men, particularly these seniors, they have to get rid of all of that and just lose themselves in this game. Well, and it's, uh, I think it's the easiest place to do that is King. Comes up big on a jump shot. He gets him into a little bit of a rhythm. But, you know, this is a sanctuary, Tim. And, and you know, it's, it's outside of this where you really run into all the noise. Johnson has checked into the game. It's a little stop and go by Jerome. Ooh, the iron unkind. And it's pulled down by the Cardinals. Uh, two very good defensive teams, more than very good. But uh, up to this point, uh, hitting's been uh, beating the pitching. That both teams shooting extraordinarily well. Dang Adele fouled on the way up. And this is the young man, DeAndre Hunter, that committed the foul. That really does help this Virginia team. I think it's one of the reasons why they got a chance to go deeper into March than in the past. Mike, in a lot of ways, he is a tough cover. When they put him down at the four spot, he's really outstanding. Well, we need to I mean, we need to watch that because he tweaked an ankle in practice the other day, and they were satisfied today at shoot around that he was well enough to play. But the key thing, Tim, is to see how he reacts defensively. You know, you can kind of choreograph things offensively. You know how you're going to move, but in reacting, especially to a driver, it could be a little difficult. Said it happened at the very end of practice. Don't they always they happen? Always, the, it's, it's, <laughs> that's been my experience. Always you know, at like, the end of practice. The coach would always say, I was going to end practice right there, and then you go one more play, and you know, a key guy go, goes, goes down. Hall gives it up. There's Hunter, and that's a good look out to Jerome. He can put the ball on the deck in the post area and pass it out of the post as well as any. And he's also capable of a monster game, 2 at 31 against uh, BC earlier this year. DJ King, the sophomore from Cleveland, giving it up. Shot clock winding down near 10, Adele. And that was a miscommunication. It was supposed to be a switch there defensively. It wasn't, and uh, that was like layup line throws. And Nigel Johnson got the look from his head coach, and they're on their feet here in Louisville. Seven nothing Cardinals run. In traffic, a reach in foul. 
Sutton had just come into the game. Here's Dang Adele. Yeah, I see you've got the blown coverage right there, just getting right in, and uh, terrific start for the season for him as well. And Dave Paget hoping that uh, he comes back for his, <laughs> to have a senior night next year. Dwayne Sutton did get that foul, his first. Darius Perry checks into the game now, replacing Adele. Johnson checks out, and Guy comes back onto the floor for Virginia. See some scores around the ACC from earlier this week. What a huge win that was for Miami well, for in Joel, Chapel Hill. For Joel Berry to come down, basically bring them back, and then Jaquan Newton in that bomb at the buzzer. Mahmoud brings down that rebound. And this is a nice run that the Cardinals have going. Key to beating Virginia is getting out early against them. Sutton well, out there, and it's pulled down by Hunter. Also, if you can hit multiple figure threes, that really aids the cause. And this is a Louisville team, Tim, at Charlottesville that shot 50%. Not a lot of teams do that against Virginia. You just don't get that many possessions against them. Hunter not there. Salt. There to clean it up. Boy, how often does he do that? Ron, this is the thing that tires you down. You have a long defensive possession, and then another offensive rebound, and then it's another 20 or 25 seconds. They dig into your legs by making sure those shots are taken with under 10 on the clock. Guy in traffic. Salt again trying to keep it alive, but can't. Cavaliers have gone cold the last three minutes. King with a ball fake. And it's blocked. Salt came away, but he did walk as he fell to the ground. You wouldn't think about it, you, you, you wouldn't think about it but in league play, these are two of the best shot-blocking teams, especially for Virginia. The terrific help side defense that time. Devin Hall checks back into the game. Jerome sits down. B.J. King prepares to trigger it in after they took care of the perspiration. Snyder after the dribble handoff. That's what Louisville does. Tony Bennett was telling us that earlier today at the shoot around. And he has really turned himself into a fine three point shooter in the hall, uncharacteristically, his hands down on that shot. Missed everything. And the crowd is loving it. Number one in peril. A 10 love run. Huge. Right on cue, and the Cardinals lead. You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Ryan, we talked about Tim and uh, with Tony Bennett, and he said the uh, ability of Louisville's perimeter to drive the lane. They want to protect it so far, getting an outscored 8-4 in there. And for Louisville, the reason, the big reason I think they lost the game in Charlottesville, they had 14 turnovers that led to 22 points. That's too many to give to a team that uh, doesn't score easily. Those are your Carolina Ford keys to the game. Well, they had a four-point lead with just over seven minutes to play. Those turnovers got in the way, and Virginia came on to win. John Paul Jones. What a lovely arena that is. This one is, too. Boy, I love coming into this building. Snyder! It's now a 13 to love run. Yeah, they just had a real balanced scoring for uh, Louisville, but uh, Piaquito is the only one who's shown up offensively so far for Virginia. Maybe time for Guy to dial himself up. He's made some big shots. Almost a five-minute drought as Wilkins takes it in and gets the roll to finally end it just under the five-minute mark in that uh, offer for Virginia. Yeah, and had a, uh, had a good mismatch inside, took advantage of it, nice solid post move. Soup inside, Spalding again. Diakite coming over to help. I think he may be tagged with the foul, and he is. And there's the look, and uh, pass is just, you know, guy who's in rhythm is, you, 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 you gotta close out a little bit faster than that, and there's the, no double team coming. 
and uh, just Wilkins being very patient on the dribble. Ryan McMahon is checking into the game. Replacing Snyder for a moment. And McMahon, you may recall, got hot in Charlottesville. He is an absolute three-point sharpshooter, and he'll launch him from really, really deep. And against Virginia, it really does help to have the deep three ball working. And his absence really hurt them. Or not, he didn't hurt, but missing the first seven games with the broken ribs. It took him a while to get back into a rhythm and flow, but they did not have him right from the start of the season, and he was a key component. It was a late pickup by the former coach, Rick Patino out of Sarasota, Florida. Become a crowd favorite here. Hunter, unable to get that one to go. Quick release from Adele. So far, no runouts for either team. It's been uh, it's been shots, rebounds, and uh, get into a set offense. Adele pulls up. Jerome, the rebound for the Cavaliers. Hi, Jerome, sophomore in New Rochelle, New York. One of the leaders of this team, as is this guy. Hall. Boy, Spalding just ran away from him, but he missed the chip shot. Yeah, you, can't, you can't believe that he missed that layup, and you can't leave a guy with a live dribble like that at the top of the key. Wow. That was one that got away from Virginia. Spalding, beautiful pass. A bounce pass entry to Dwayne Sutton. It's a timeout. And it was just kind of funny to me that the Louisville coaching staff was really trying to get everybody calmed down a little bit. I mean, every, it's, so, it's such an, an emotional night. But uh, these are the things. This was great spacing. And I talked about Spalding. All the things that he can do is it's coming from the left-hand side. But uh, Hunter, the freshman, got his head turned a little bit, got caught peeking in the, uh, into the backfield and paid for it, but that was a beautiful bounce pass. This is now a 16-2 run, Mike, over a 6-minute, 18-second oh. period. You don't often have these kinds of opportunities against a club like Virginia. Remember that, in, with speaking of both of these teams, that, that number, met, that lead may almost seem double to yeah. what it is. Yeah, because you realize how few possessions in a game with Virginia you're going to get. The opposite, of course, is that the Cavaliers understand that, too. Uh, and now playing from, from behind, there may be a little bit more sense of urgency. Wilkins. Salt again runs down an offensive board and saves it to Jerome. Much better job by Anthony there by Sutton fighting for position inside. Nigel Johnson giving it up to Salt. No double coming for Jack, and he's fouled. Well, and that's, you know, you shouldn't have to double him. And that's not being disrespectful, but that's, you know, he's, he's not a great offensive player, but what he did is he kept pressing the issue and he picked up the foul. As Salt, very much like uh, Isaiah Wilkins, would be playing the role of servant for this team. He, they do all the little things. Well, our coverage of ACC basketball being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network, and we welcome the nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe. 175 countries on the high seas. Proud to have you with us. Hope you enjoy it tonight as much as we do. That's a, you know, within the framework of the offense, you talk about serving assault is more of a screener. A uh, guy who's going to pick up garbage around the basket on dribbles and drives like that. So anything you can get off of him in a direct post is, is uh, found money. McMahon, nice. Boy, he created the opening. Yes, he did. First, pass it into the post and then create the space. But, you know, the guy's got to know he can't sink that far off him. I mean, he's, he's got unlimited range. He can only help so much off of that position. Got a switch here, and 
Salt was left free. Johnson gives it up, and here's Jerome from downtown. That's a silencer. Yeah, and that's and you know you're thinking, all right, I got a big drive score, but that uh, that unselfish play and that kick around got Jerome a great look. Did you see the look on the face? Of McMahon when he saw he had switched on and was having to deal with salt in the post. Yeah, you just, <laughs> your head gets on a swivel and you start screaming for help in that situation. Perry fouled by Jerome. <laughs> Boy, these cards are hot on senior night, G-Man. McMahon and company. Beautifully done. Bills built an early 10-point lead, Tim, and they really kind of shared the wealth, and it was V.J. King that got them started. Uh, Dang Adele let to have a very opportunistic drive, and then Quinn Snyder, you knew he, he was going to let this night pass by quietly, and then the great back door for Wayne Sutton. Eight guys have played, seven guys have scored for the Cardinals. And as good as Virginia is defensively, and as we mentioned a moment ago, Cavaliers have led the nation in scoring defense five times, including four times in the last five years. You you have to score the ball at some point, and Diakite has had very little consistent help. Now, maybe, just maybe, some three balls from Ty Jerome can help matters just a bit. He's in there now trying to check Adele. Nice defensive work. Ball is out of bounds, though. Last touch by the Cavaliers. See the points in the paint story. Most of that have been on straight line drives by the cards. Eight on the shot clock. Mahmoud all the way to the rack. Nothing doing. Jack Salt with a thunderous rebound. Well, and he's he's more of a space protector than a rim protector. And he is a large, he, he's, a, he's, you know, they, they list him at 6'10". He's taller than oh, that. Yeah. He's not quite Isaac Haas big, but he's real big. Yeah, no doubt. Nice little scoop to the hoop and Salt with a little bit of that garbage around the rim you were well, talking about, G-Man, just picking it up and putting it in. But Tim, when you're playing against a shot blocker like Mahmoud, he's going to go after everything. So you have to follow behind him, and the offensive glass is going to be wide open. Adele over Jerome. Now this is... This is the one thing, you know, you look at this Virginia team, three-point shooting can be really dangerous. They will four or five now. They're shooting 61% of the game against the best defensive team in the country. Well, when we were talking to David Padgett before the game, he said, well, I don't know if we'll shoot 50% again. Travel, and it's going the other way. Well, right now, they're not only at 50, they're at 60 plus. He was underselling it. Yeah. <laughs> It is hard to have a quality shooting percentage against the Cavaliers. There's a, uh, and as you said, it was McMahon who uh, was in the game when they made that comeback in Charlottesville. Snyder only played 19 minutes in that game, his low in the ACC this year, but uh, Padgett said, hey, I've stuck with the guys who got me back into the game. Now he's got a couple of ball handlers out there. Adele again, feeling it. And the rebound is cleared by Devin Hall. Paul, probably the more well-rounded of the five players. If you were looking to just find one guy, I would, I would vote, I would yeah. vote for him yeah, for first team. Jerome, that one goes crying off the front iron. Yet another offensive rebound for Wilkins. These recycles really add up when you're trying to defend Virginia. And McMahon will pick up the foul. Reaching in on Guy. Well, time to look at the nation's top 25, brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Virginia trying to go to number one for a fourth straight week. That happened a couple of times, both in 80, 81, and in 82, the most recent time they were number one. Duke, Carolina, and Clemson goes out of the ACC. Well, and I think you know, we talk about coaches of the year. I think these two are in the conversation, obviously. Brad Brownell is definitely in the conversation. No and uh, how about Kevin Keats and what job he's done his first year at NC State? Remarkable job by all of those mentioned. McMahon has now picked up two fouls in less than 30 seconds. And he'll have to sit down. And, it's, uh, and, and what happens sometimes, 
you know, Virginia moves the ball and people so well that you find yourself grabbing and reaching, especially as the possession goes along. They were trying to figure out, I think, who was credited with that foul, and it was McMahon. And this is the one thing about the Virginia's defense, too, that they don't foul much. Therefore, they don't get into the penalty much and give up. Uh, they don't take a ton of free throws. They don't give up a bunch either. I think the discussion is whether we're in the bonus, and we are. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's yeah. definitely one and one. Yeah, I think there was some concern as to whether we were in the one and one, and we are. So Kyle Guy gets to the strike. 86% on the season. <laughs> Tony Bennett said, you know, he's never going to be Mr. Universe, but he has gotten bigger and stronger from yeah, last year. I love that. His uh, dad, Joe, guy, played football, was on the track team at Cincinnati back in the mid-90s. And along with, you think about Guy and Jerome, these are combo guards that have really impressively replace London Parentes. Well, and it's, and it's, back, it's back almost at a time where guards could do everything. That's right. They could make a play. They could make a shot. Snyder working in on Hunter. Mahmoud, a sweeping hook that does not fall, and great block out that time by Virginia. That, 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 that was one of the more solid uh, defensive efforts that Virginia's had. But uh, I, I just say, you got to get Hall. you got to get, get these guys going. Great ball fake that time. Hunter, the offensive board, and he's fouled. I tell you, foul difficulty could be an issue, even with Louisville's size and versatility inside. Spalding's got a pair. That one goes against Mahmoud. His second. Attrition could be an issue late in this game, particularly with the Cardinals' front line as they get worn down by that pack line defense and also a front line that really gobbles up offensive rebounds for Virginia. A lot of those guys sitting have two right now, including McMahon. And you see the three guys who are. Uh huddled up at half court talking a little bit about the offense talking about guy hall and jerome there's a quick show from salt he hustles back to get with my mood king too strong run down by kyle guy Good sequence there by Louisville in defensive transition. Yeah, that was, uh, they, they were looking for a breakout. I think it's just, you know, trying to manufacture some easy points. But just uh, right now, at this point, Louisville's running their offense better. Hunter. Not there. Salt trying to keep it alive. Good block out by Adele. You know, it's, it's almost like Virginia has gone more, more to the post-up game, gotten away from jump shooting a little bit. Adele. Salt has it knocked away by Mahmoud. And it'll go the other way. Timeout. Cardinals lead is eight after a 16-2 run earlier. Of our Mellow Mushroom three-point challenge. The ACC three-point challenge presented by Mellow Mushroom. The iron was kind or unkind to many throughout the course of the year. Remember, you can... Free download this to your app store. Play as your favorite ACC team. People all around the ACC have been playing all season long. There is your code line. $5 off online orders. U.S. code ACC5. Check out the $5 off your order. Visit metalbusroom.com slash order. I must say I attempted to play in... I think uh, Jaminski beat me, Dan Bonner beat me. Oh, wow, well, that, <laughs> that made me 1 in 15. <laughs> <laughs> in traffic, Hall stays with it over Adele. See, there are, just, there are a lot of good matchups that Louisville has in this game defensively. Like that one, you know, 
with uh, Dang Adele. Uh, and his his length, I think, really bothered on that play. We were talking with Tony today at the shoot around. He, it's the first thing he mentioned to us: the length and athleticism of this Louisville team. And you see there another foul and that's a, on that's Ty a, Jerome. That's another one where VJ King has got some size on Jerome and is able to draw the foul. You mentioned uh, VJ's struggles of late. The sophomore from Cleveland in his last eight games, two out of 15 from three. And that includes a current streak of nine straight misses coming into tonight's game. But you know the game is in there, and it's just a question of when when it pops back out. Well, Dave Padgett told him, he said, look, just relax. Be a defender. You know, do your work that way. Your shot's going to come back. But, you know, don't, don't get... You don't let one side of the floor affect the other side. Of the, floor. Uh, the first McDonald's All-American to sign with Louisville in five years. 31-21 with three minutes left in the opening half. Nigel Johnson running that curl and Quinn Snyder right in front of him. Now a step back. Jumper. Oh, and it does not fall off the heel. Wilkins fighting for it. Big time scrum. Human floor burns all around. I think they're going to rule a tie ball. The arrow is to Louisville. Yeah, this is, uh, this is you know, fighting for possession, fighting for uh, your rankings, and, uh, but fighting for the ball. And uh, terrific hustle, Sutton, the first one to hit the deck. And a nice piece of officiating in my mind to just call that one a tie ball. Takes a while to clean up the perspiration on the deck. Well, and he just, uh, you ever see, that his first start in a terrific game against Virginia Tech, a double-double. And Padgett said it was more of a gut feeling. He just felt like it was a better matchup with the personnel Virginia Tech had. Adele. Lost it on the way up. Was trying to duck under. Had it stripped when he brought the ball down. Hall comes back the other way. I tell you, Louisville has really dug in, Mike, on this end of the floor. They have given the pack line defense a dose of their own medicine. Well, and the big thing, too, is they've covered the three-point line extraordinarily well. They only one of five to this point. And now, wow, you talk about the iron downright rude. Out of bounds, last touch by Louisville. After that miss by Kyle Guy and the ball just wound and wound and wound and finally came out. They are now one of their last nine from the floor. It looks like every putt that I've ever hit in my <laughs> life. You know, just a little slap around the rim. Uh, and uh, and uh, Louisville could really have stretched this game out. There were a number of times where uh, the Cavaliers have gotten multiple chances in a possession. Number one team in America trying to hold on for a fourth straight week. In peril right now, albeit in the first half. They trail by 10. Wilkins. Tough pass in traffic. Shot clock under 10, and Hall launches. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's, you know, to, what they need to just concentrate on right now, Tim, is that despite how they played only down by seven and a chance to really get a little momentum going in the locker room. Snyder, stop and go. Not there, and it's pulled down by Wilkins. Quick outlet to Nigel Jensen. Well, you can see Padgett really exhorting his troops. They worked hard on the defensive areas coming into this game tonight. Salt. Handled, and there's Wilkins again, finding a way for another offensive rebound. Uh, an opportunity to miss right there. Offensive rebounding, a great chance to get an open look at a three. Adele! He is fouled and will get to the line. Well, Mike, they are cleaning up on the on the glass. I mean, that's what Virginia has done to stay in this game. Look at the offensive rebounding 19, numbers there. Yeah, 19 to 13, 8 to 1 offensive rebounding edge. We'll see the second point, the chance point story. That's what's keeping them at least in contact at this stage. Adele at the line. Well, 
coming up on the Hardy's Halftime Report. We'll preview an exciting new show from Raycom Sports, the Heroes of the Dorm, Atlantic Coast Region. That plus we'll talk ACC Tournament on the Hardy's Halftime Report. And, uh, you know, on the road, Virginia right now is shooting 28%. Um, you know, but this is about the type of scoring pace that we expected coming in. Yeah, in the end, you'd figure this game would wind up in the 50s, high well, 50s well, maybe. Yeah, first, first team to 60 probably yeah. pencil that in. Cardinals by eight. 11 second differential on the shot clock. Guy with a little floater baseline gets it to go. And a quick timeout taken by Louisville. Well, here's our first Citizens Bank forever first moment where we look at the significance of Virginia's rise to the top of the AP poll. How about this? Ranked number one in the AP for the third straight week. Then, ranked number one since December of 1982, first time ever. And then, the fourth team to reach number one in the AP after beginning the season unranked. And I think that's the most astonishing thing about what they've accomplished here under Tony Bennett. It's great. In, in fairness, there are, have been a ton of guys on that team that were not major players last year, but have really stepped up their game. So they were very much an unknown quantity. But uh, number eight, last time they were ranked number one, I had the, I don't know if I call it pleasure, <laughs> playing against uh, one Ralph Sampson. Oh, I do recall that. <laughs> I was a senior when he was a freshman, and. He went on to become three-time national player of the year. Well, McMahon has checked into the game, perhaps for this last opportunity in a shot, playing with two fouls. Perry is also out there. Adele right to the rack, rejected by Wilkins. And I think it's going the other way, and it is. Quality defense from the pack line right there. Yeah, that's where the help is so is, is so good. And then we, you know, again, you don't expect that there's not a seven-footer in there per se, but that's more of a timing block. And uh, 1.6 still might be able to get away with something long if you want to try for it. Wilkins will give it a heave. Yes, we are at the intermission. Well, this is the fourth time Virginia has trailed at the half this season. There are the numbers. The deep three going early. And Virginia with a quick opportunity to get back and did so, cutting it to six. Hardy halftime report coming right up. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Line, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By your local Chevy dealers. And by the Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. ACC basketball is being brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Hardy. By Progressive Insurance. By First Citizens Bank. And by Mellow Mushroom, out of this world pizza. A home to Louisville Slugger. And by the way, G-Man, I've got one with my name on it, given to me by these fine people at Louisville Slugger through our football Saturday show. That well, we well you know what? I got one too, man, <laughs> with my name on it. So let's take, let's take put that you, big boy. Let's take a, a time now for your innovative play brought to you by Progressive Insurance, your first round draft pick for car insurance. This coming from the first meeting between these two in Charlottesville. Well, and this, is, this is more efficient offense. They do a lot of ball screening away from the ball, and uh, you see the help side, it draws in, and uh, you know, the, the easy finish at the rim. And then they also, on the weak side, will run a double screen. And uh, just a, you know, a nice guy, for, uh, guy coming around on the curl. He follows the first curl man in. And they need more of that. Only four assists in that first half for Virginia. So much of what they do really is a clinic. And my bat's bigger than your bat. <laughs> yes, <so>. it is. <laughs> like those Jerry Lucas clubs, I remember seeing one, one day. When you're 6'8 or above, you better have a bigger bat or a bigger club. The opening possession here for the Cavaliers, down six. You know, they make a bucket here. It's suddenly 
down to four or below, and they've been down by as many as 12. Jerome, a leaner. That's going to be an offensive foul. Tony Bennett disagrees with Jamie Lucky on that. He got his arm extended and picks up the offensive foul. Ty Jerome, that's his third foul. Yeah, that's big, very big. Yeah, huge. And I tell you what, Louisville has done a terrific job of guarding guys coming off screen, staying in their shirts, following them closely, getting a little help on the other side. <laughs> I get a kick out of Tony. You know, when when he's upset, it's almost as if he's pleading. He's not, he's not really griping. He's he's got that anguished look and uh, what a boyish approach that he still has with his face. <laughs> well, the officials just uh, kind of wave and smile and move on to the next play. Spalding looking down low for Mahmoud. Wilkins disrupts it, and it leads to a turnover. Uh, and that's what, uh, now that they change defensively, and this is what Virginia does. If that goes into the post, they're going to come and double big from the weak side. They get it out of Spalding's hands and extended the play. Got the turnover. Nigel Johnson stuck in the corner with Snyder on him. Uses the pick and gets it back into Dow's hands. Shot clock down to five. Nigel Johnson launches. Spalding had it, lost it. Salt quickly to it. And yet another recycle for Louisville defensively to deal with. Great pass inside. Wilkins going reversal. Count it. And a foul. That's just vintage Virginia right there. And that, and that may be Mahmoud's third personal foul as well. It is. So all of a sudden now key guys uh, starting to mount up. But that was a very unselfish play by Devin Hall, who has not had the best night scoring the ball. And by the way, Mahmoud, who is part of that matchup problem for Virginia, still on the floor with three, and other frontline players for Louisville have two. Mahmoud with a little high low game to Spalding and the reach in foul spotted. Yeah, I, I don't know that they would come and double Mahmoud down low, but Spalding much more dangerous on the low block. Isaiah Wilkins got the foul, his first. Adele lost his dribble, but it was picked up by V.J. King. In traffic. Well done. That was just a beautiful move, sweeping in the lane by Spalding. Well, and it, instead of posting up and he had salt, he did a smart thing. He pulled off the lane, squared up on him, and was able to use his foot speed. The lead is five. Wilkins. That was a double dribble. Yeah, he did. I think he was concentrating so much on holding his pivot foot, he forgot about what he was doing with the rock. You know, sometimes you can get away with that. You, you hold it for so long that the referees may, may, may you're maybe you're hoping, well, they, they forgot that I dribbled in the first place. <laughs> But uh, also remember, too, that once he picks up the dribble, then the five count starts. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the second. They're really trying to work that high-low game with Mahmoud and Spalding. Now Snyder has stepped back. That's a three ball. And the lead back up to eight. Yeah, he's, he's got a... He's got enough of a size advantage over Nigel Johnson that he was able to step back and Johnson in a bad place right now at the half court line. Perpetual motion, Devin Hall. But he's got a tough cover here with Mahmoud. Shot clock down to five. Wilkins again in traffic. Hall leaves it for Wilkins. That's a violation. They ran out of time. Yeah, I see Devin Hall should have taken that shot. And then he, he passed his teammate into a turnover that time. And he had that little floater in the lane. He just got to have a little bit more clock awareness. Well, he, Brian, and it's, there was a, a substitution that took place in the referees allowed it to happen without uh, Nigel Johnson getting off of the floor, so they'll have a reset of the play. 
Mike Eads taking care of it. Snyder, Spalding, Mahmoud, V.J. King, and Adele, the five on the floor for Louisville. Three and a half minutes gone by, and the lead back up to eight. Boy, King almost got away. He almost carried that. Very close. Under ten on the clock, and he pumps. And that's going to be four on Mahmoud. Wow. And just he lost his balance. That was part of it. But, but you have yeah, to. Yeah, you just got to turn around and get back on that. And that's uh, that was a bad way to pick up your fourth Ooh. foul. You think? Not, not that any of them are good. But yeah, it, it was more than that. Too. He just kind of went crashing into a into a crowd that time. Getting a long, long piece of conversation here from his head coach. Understand time and score, young man. Thirty-seven to twenty-nine. Hunter, we haven't heard much from him, and you talked about that ankle earlier, Mike. It may be affecting him some tonight. There's another turnover. Adele has King down there with him along with Sutton. He'll take it himself. And, and that was almost more of a secondary break. Kind of, you know, some job getting back with the driving lane opened up, and that was one of the easier baskets that Louisville has gotten in this game. Let's keep an eye here on Hunter, G-Man, to see if he is as aggressive as you'd like to see him be. Adele is tagging him right now. Hall with a floater baseline. That's, that's the guy who's got to be aggressive right there. And, then, you know, we talked about the shot before was the, the shot clock violation. Adele left free at the nail, and it's pulled down by Salt. Now, this is where... You know, there's a fine line between, you know, between running through your offense and maybe just being a little selfish, but their, their big three scorers have got to step up. This is one of them. Yeah, but, in, but King, again, has got that size and length advantage. It's tough for a guy to, to make the basket. It is. Tough shot. Yeah. Pull down by Spalding, and here comes King. Nice move. Oh, my. Tony Ben is just trying to wait for that number 20, and he's they're gonna get it. Ring it up. Adele gets it done. King is on the loose. Using the window pane. And a stop and go, show and go. Uh, Louisville has uh, played extraordinarily well on the offensive end. Continue here in the second half. They've been posting up Spalding. Snyder gives them a big step back three on that shot. They've been up doing it off the dribble as well. Dang Adele getting into the action. And then uh, one of the few easy baskets, Tim, that they've gotten in transition. I think you're right. The combination of Adele and V.J. King as wing players, and even in the backcourt, have made it really tough on Ty Jerome, on Kyle Guy. And those are the guys in that backcourt for Virginia that have got to give them some scoring punch because we all know that the guys down low, other than the Akite, who's suddenly gone quiet, and he had some foul difficulty too, those guys are just cleaning up offensive rebounds and possibly getting putbacks. Here's Hall. Not there, Sutton, who's also made a strong contribution tonight with the rebound for the Ville. And again, we haven't really called Hunter's name much tonight, either defensively or offensively. He's back on the deck now for Virginia. And on the post up, that foul goes against Diakite. That's his third. Wilkins is on the bench. They're taking a look at his hand. Yeah, I mean that guy's a warrior. He, you know, is he he just, they'll, they'll get it fixed up. But he's look, he's just looking on the floor. He just wants to get back in as quickly as possible. There's something that's got to be popped back into place. Not a problem with that kid. I think, I think, I think even in the half court, Louisville has even become a little bit more um, the, the deliberate, yep. a little slow, running the clock a little bit more. They're playing Virginia's game, yep. and they've been better at it. And now they get back to the line again. And fouls are mounting 
against the Cavaliers as well. And this is a team, that, again, that doesn't foul much, doesn't get into the penalty much, but with an aggressive Louisville team, they're going to be, you know, you know, under probably 10-minute mark, they could be shooting free throws. B.J. Kane is such an outstanding talent. We mentioned he was their first McDonald's All-American quite some time. And with the loss of Donovan Mitchell in a lot of ways, and you think about how hard he worked to make himself a lottery pick, this is a kid also that's got a tremendous ceiling for success. Well, he, was, he was a backup with Adele last year. Really, only 13 minutes a game, but, uh, you know, now expanded time and expanded production. They're on their feet at the KFC Yum Center. Diakite in traffic. That's a foul. Uh, Snyder a little late. A little late coming down on the lockdown. First foul on Quentin. He got him. Yeah, no, there's no question he ran into him, and that was a, you know, Diakite, a nice a move inside. Jerome, the floater. Nice work by Hunter, but he can't get it to go. Got to the, he got to the glass, but could not tip it in. Well, only one offensive rebound in the second half for Virginia, so uh, Louisville's taking care of their defensive glass. A turnover underneath. Here comes Devin Hall. Count it, and a foul. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's something that Virginia's going to have to do as this game progresses to get back in it, to be a little bit more opportunistic in running. And Hall, you know, one on three, I think under normal circumstances in a tie game, he might have pulled that one back, but he understands the uh, injury, and then there's the mistake of saving it under the uh, under your own basket. It was the first pass to a fast break. He cannot convert at the free throw line. Well, he's 91% yeah. too. <laughs> that is a rare miss. Just over seven minutes gone by. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, happy to have you with us. Number one is in peril. Louisville trying to do them in on senior night. Adele. Uh, and, you know, and Tony, Tony Bennett downplayed it, his team downplayed it. I don't care what you say. When you're number one, other teams view you differently. And uh, especially in an emotional night like this, you're going to get the best punch. Can you counter? Can they get the job done on the road where they have been so successful? And that's going to be a foul. It goes the other way, an offensive foul. Yeah, hell ball. Hell ball, I beg your pardon. It was a tie, and the possession arrow is to Louisville. But right now, he's pulling all the strings. Pageant's got his team playing some of the best Tony Bennett style basketball yep. we've seen by anyone other than Virginia in the Atlantic Coast Conference. This crowd is really into it now. They'll begin smelling it even more once we get under the 10 minute mark. A collective gasp from the Louisville crowd after the miss. You see who the, uh, the fresher team is that Louisville has gone deeper into their bench in this game. Here's Guy. Boy, he's had tough luck tonight. He's had at least two of them go halfway down the cylinder and out. One of seven now on the game. But not, he's, he really has not had really any good looks. You're right. And that's a foul against Virginia. It'll go against Kyle Guy. Just ring up another one for Dang, will you? Adele has been unstoppable in the lead 13. You're watching the ACC Network. It's an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, streaming live now on the ACC.com, the official ACC mobile app. And time now for our principal presents the second half game plan. G-Man, tell me about it. Well, it's uh, offensive efficiency for Virginia. Just really not shooting poorly, 31% in the game, and a lot really due to Louisville's length and size and defensive tenacity, only five assists in the game. And for the Cardinals, they've really closed off the defensive glass. Uh, only two offensive rebounds so far in the first eight minutes after giving up multiple second-chance points in the first half. You know, in a lot of ways, 
you can make a case that there are no two teams from the same state any more different than Virginia and Virginia Tech. That one was lost on the dribble, but last touched apparently by Virginia. But the way they've taken the momentum from that road win and brought it here, Mike, Louisville may be tapping into something, and Tony Bennett's club just caught him at the wrong time. Snyder from way downtown. Wilkins comes away with a rebound. He's back in there. They taped up that thumb, his right thumb, got it back in play. All right, he's, he's not a he's not a 20 point score for you. So, you know, and it's something like that is going to limit him to a degree, but still shouldn't hurt him defensively or rebounding. Jerome, that's a big three. They needed that. And Ty out of Iona Prep in New Rochelle got it done. Yeah, you know, it is, this is just, it's a tough Virginia team to pull away from. Is it ever? That's a reach in foul on Wilkins. They had him pinched inside, and Wilkins gets the foul. Yeah, it's, here's, here's a look. He starts on, uh, you know, guys got the ball in the middle of the floor. But they'll set multiple screens for him, and that was a that was a great look. And you, that time Snyder got caught coming over the top, and it gave uh, it gave Jerome just enough room to get the shot off. Adele at the line, 77 percent on the season. Again, we touched on that particular shot. They're going to need a lot more of that, my Virginia, if they're going to have a chance to really win this game. And right now, Louisville is clamped down on all of their guards from beyond the arc. I mean, Dave Padgett, you know, talked about, he said, hey, you know, we went up to Charlottesville, we shot 50%, <laughs> and we made eight threes. <laughs> you know, you think you're coming out of there with a win, but Virginia made nine in that game. And, uh, you know, that's, they're, they're, that's how they're gonna have to catch up in a hurry or really slow the game down and get to the free throw line. Hall with the dump down to Diakite. Uses the glass. He's, he's gotten a lot of capability. He's been their best offensive player today. He has. I, when they've gotten him the ball in the low block, he's been effective. This is a kid averaging just under five a game on the season. Adele leaves it for Spalding. Oh. It's that dribble drive penetration that breaks down everything. Wilkins unaccustomed to seeing that. He was very frustrated after he saw that layup. That's not something Virginia gives up generally. And Jerome, he may have first been looking for an alley-oop and decided to ad-lib a shot and got it to go. But all of a sudden now, in the last few possessions, Virginia's starting to look better offensively. A little bit more in rhythm, getting better shots. That's a walk on the ball thing. Here's, here's the look and see when Adele, when he comes off the corner and you get the, you get the little bit of help and then he has to help again. Do you think they just, you know, it's what you have to do. You've got to have a guard come in from the other side to cover up Spalding. The lead is 10. Nine and change remaining. Number one in the country in trouble today. That runner doesn't fall and Spalding clears. Every possession becomes so important. Late in a game when you know there aren't going to be nearly as many as would be the norm. Yeah, if, they, if Virginia can somehow get this down to a six point game in the under eight timeout, you know, that would be, they, they, they would have come back in from a big hole. Hall, right to Wilkins inside. Ball was knocked away by Sutton. And, that may be an instance right there of where that hand comes into play, where he was not able to handle the basketball cleanly. The dribble away, and that looked like it went off him. Uh, we can't review it until we're after two minutes. Under two minutes, they review those. And that runner falls for God. That was a break. You're right. It really was deflected off of Virginia. Yep. Yeah, and then Dave Padgett is, is, is citing as much. Yeah, he's got a right to be upset. But in the NCAA, you can only review after two minutes left. Tim, we talk about uh, Virginia and how good they are with field goal percentage defense. Louisville third in the conference, not to be underestimated. And there have been a lot of tough opportunities for the, for the Cavs in this game. Every shot contested. 
doing a great job of staying in front of drivers and uh, you know, now that they've got giving, not giving up second chance opportunities. And here's our lending tree fast analysis. This guy right here, he had 22 the first time out, only six now. They're going to need him to make a few more buckets the rest of the way. How do you handle a full cup of success? More like Louisville just uh, running that little three-man weave out front to run some time off the clock. Foul will go against Devin Hall. First foul on Devin. See that points in the paint story, even at 16. And I've made the point that now for the uh, last 8.26 that uh, Louisville in the penalty situation, yeah. and they still have a couple of fouls to give. It's both time, so let's check the Bojangles fan of the game. Uh, you know, makeup and just for men does work for me, but I don't know if I could ever go that route. Is that, is that, a, is that a real beard or is that a way to? <laughs> they come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, and they'll all be in Brooklyn next week for the granddaddy of all conference tournaments. But right now, it's a 10-point lead for the homestanding Cardinals on senior night against the nation's number one team. Just I mean, look at the possession right now. Just a lot of standing around. Clock running down. Guy just wills his way to the rack. Last year, that was a play he couldn't make. Uh, he, he could not put the ball on the floor. He was more of a spot-up shooter. Yeah, he's, he's, added, he's added that. Yeah, he, there's no denying he has gotten much, much stronger. Louisville digging into the clock, too. Again, playing Virginia's game only a little bit better. Adele falls to the seat of his pants. Looks like we got a whistle and a foul. He's got it on the deck and goes against the Cavaliers. We'll be right back after this word from your local ACC station. Around the ACC brought to you by Flonase. This is from the entire week. Virginia Tech with a huge win at home. That Miami win at the buzzer in Chapel Hill. Clemson moving on. Notre Dame with Colson back. Look out, Bonzi is back. That could make a difference for Mike Bray's team in Brooklyn. And of course, Georgia Tech right now leading NC State with over six minutes to play. And that one is a very important game for the Wolfpack in terms of seeding for the upcoming ACC tournament. And important and important to these guys here tonight, Louisville, and that they'll, yep. they'll play them this weekend. See, Diakite, he picked up that foul as we were going to break, so he has four, forced to sit, and he's been one of the real go-to guys for Virginia. And you, you know, you can, this doesn't look like it, but on a night like this, you really get a drop off in offense with Salt coming on the floor. Yep. And again, DeAndre Hunter has been missing in action too offensively. Here he is under the tough cover of Spalding. Jerome backs out, has the mismatch against Mahmoud far from the basket, but he lost his dribble. Now he has to drive. What a move! Wow. Uh, and that's, you know, Mahmoud had to lay off that because of the four personal fouls. And uh, he, was not, he was not comfortable in that uh, cover situation. Great understanding, though, with the time. And the, even after the bad yeah. dribble by Jerome. Give me, you've got a guard 25 feet from the floor. You've got a center 25 feet from the floor. Your Take eyes him. get this big. Yeah, absolutely. Loose ball. Spalding saves it to Snyder. And he's fouled. Uh, and, and the big thing about that play, it wasn't a change in turnover. It wasn't a change in possession. So the shot clock didn't uh, didn't change. Salt got the foul. Here's the look, and it's a, you know, it's a good job just trying to take it right to his body to pick up that foul. And the same thing with Salt, just go right at him. Co-captain of this team, earlier joined the 1,000-point club. Kentucky's Mr. Basketball as a high school senior. Could be an incredible finish 
to his career at home tonight. Hunter for three. Nice block out by Spalding. He really walled off Virginia there. They have gotten the job done in second chance points. They always do, it seems. Those are big rebounds on the defensive end for Louisville, nursing this 10-point lead late. It's, it's been an average. They've started, they've started maybe a little too late right now at seven seconds. Schneider by Hunter. That was a great defensive play by DeAndre. Out of bounds, and they need a little help. We might have to go to the alternating possession. They do, and it belongs to Virginia. Neither Eads had the good look. Well, Bill Bill did, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill Covington. And he was the uh, Bill Covington was the one on the baseline, but a lot of eyes, and, uh, and that actually looked like it went off Virginia. It did. Another break for them. But that is the rule. If neither official can get help, then they go to the alternating possession. And Virginia yeah. had the yeah. possession on their side. Well, you have uh, three sets of palms up in the air and shrug shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Not a good look. The play. Right. These are three really good officials. Guy, a blow by against Mamou, right into a Spalding tie up. How about that? That's just a cardinal wall that. Kyle Guy ran into. Where Mahmoud has to be careful. Spalding's only got two fouls. He can be aggressive, and that was a great, he just capped the ball. Terrific help. No doubt. But they've got to be, I mean, it's one thing to run clock, but Louisville's got to get into their action about 15 seconds. Snyder calls his own number. Off the heel and salt brings it down. One thing again, talk about the emotion of senior night. He's got to be careful about getting caught up and trying to do a little bit too much. Hunter posting up. Got a smaller defender on him. And there's a foul. Well, Darius Perry was stuck with him. The foul goes against Spaulding, who came over to get help. That's this third foul. Well, only the 15 fouls. There's still one more to give before they get into the penalty. A little leadership there. <laughs> Perry told by the veteran King, hey, look, let's, let's live to fight another day here. Time to move on. Off the curl, Hunter. Jerome gives it up to Wilkins. Adele the rebound. Cavaliers just have not been able to find it from the wing or up top in the perimeter tonight. Well, and it's, uh, it, 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 you know, Louisville's had the answer on both ends of the floor. And I think they got Salt with a hold. And now it's, now it's gonna be the double bonus for the rest of the way for, uh, for the Cardinals. Third foul on Salt. If they can go this, get a couple of stops and stretch this out to 14 points, that's going to be a lot for Virginia to overcome. And Tony's got to turn to Kyle Guy and get him back out there. Spalding unable to get it done at the free throw line. And, and, and now they're going to go really small with Salt coming out of the game. So let's see if uh, Dave Padgett uh, has to counter. I mean, he's got Spalding, Mahmoud, and uh, Deng Adele out on the floor. Well, that's like a turnover when you miss those free throws. We've been stuck on this 10-point cushion for Louisville for quite some time. Jerome, good ball movement to Hunter. And finally, DeAndre, the redshirt freshman from Philly, Friends Central puts it down. He can be a factor late. Well, and it's, this is now if, if Louisville's size can produce on the other end of the floor, then it offsets it to a degree. Tough pass. Wilkins saves it. But Louisville for his own team. Goes off his hand and will stay with Louisville. As he lost his balance down along the baseline. They're going to need more of this from Hunter and then some. 
The ACC mobile app is free and covers all 15 teams. Every ACC sport right now users have a chance to win out back for a year. Look for a banner in the app for your chance to enter to win. More details are available at the ACC.com slash mobile app. Uh, Virginia has won the last five meetings between these two, and they lead the series overall 12 games to four. But the engines are revved up for the home team tonight. Louisville looking for a signature win against the number one team in the country and a validation for a punch ticket to the NCAA tournament as an at-large. Under 10 to shoot. Adele falling away. Tough. Really tough. Yeah, and it's uh, a Again, slipping out the mismatch, he says he had the best shooting night in the world. Just knocked down a couple of threes, but good solid post move. But during a screen situation, we've got a foul. Uh, maybe King is going to be tagged with a foul. That's his second. Well, he sees no double team coming. Just a couple of back, you know, back in dribbles and then creates space with the little fadeaway. Now one more, and Virginia will be in the bonus. But Louisville, as you mentioned, already in the double. Guy works his way baseline free to cut it to seven. Well, you can't afford to give up the baseline like that. No chance for help to come over. And uh, and actually, in that last timeout, Dave Padgett did go smaller, getting Mahmoud out of the game. How about that strip by Jerome. Virginia doing what they always do, hanging around. Jerome, yes and one. You have to close these guys out. B.J. King picks up the foul. Well, they rarely beat themselves, and they rarely turn the ball over, but here it is, just the, the suspect defense by King right there, and then uh, the strong hands, and this was, this was just a great drive, and it's Spalding, the only one in there who was like any kind of a shot blocker. Oh, and the iron kind, too, with the help of the backboard. Two possession game, three minutes left here on the ACC Network. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, happy to have you with us. Adele needs help. McMahon has come onto the floor. Here's Q. Snyder. Spalding can't follow. Uh, it was right point blank range, too. And then this is this is the risk you run when you take your foot off the gas and Louisville started to run some clock and got out of some rhythm. Hall on a blow by. It's down to two. Timeout. Dave Padgett. How about this? This is why you're number one in the country. Yeah, here's the look. I mean, his team has such great leadership, and that may be its strongest quality. But so many of the things that weren't happening for them in the first 30 minutes makes it very special. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life, with the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. And by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. On the banks of the river in Louisville, Kentucky, Tony Bennett's team grinding away. They haven't been in a position to lead this game or tie this game in quite some time. Their last lead was at the 1809 mark of the first half. And they're down two now. Adele. Well, he turned down a three. He had an open look and made a move to the baseline, turned into a tougher shot. I thought I almost got away with it. I did get away to travel on that call. Cavaliers shoot for the tie or the lead right here. And they've got their guns in the backcourt, both Jerome and Guy. And he wants to post up McMahon, and he picks up the foul from him. Yeah, and I can't imagine there are many times when Ty Jerome is working with the postmen, but uh, they, they again, they see the size advantage inside, worked hard to receive the ball, and got the call. And the arm bar was the call from Jamie Lucky. And, you know, McMahon isn't, and then the other, I mean, McMahon isn't used to guarding people down in the low block either. Ty Jerome with a chance to tie it right here. Well, this... 
this crowd has gone from the roof coming off of oh, it yeah. two minutes ago to being extremely apprehensive. It may not be artistic. It seldom is with Virginia. But they will outwork you, and they'll continue with their discipline and force you to play their game, and you better be better than them for 40 minutes, not 37. Adele, that was deflected. McMahon saved it. Still, the shot clock winding down. It's at five. And he didn't, McMahon didn't realize it either. He, Snyder, that was off the backboard, and it's pulled down by Hall. And McMahon didn't realize that the shot clock didn't reset. He was dribbling out the half court to reset the offense. What a remarkable comeback. A steal. Here comes McMahon. Reversal doesn't go. And the follow by Spalding. Right, what a great, great defensive play to come back from that. Missed the layup, but he made that play happen. Oh, the kid from Sarasota, an original walk-on that earned his way, comes in and takes the play after really being deflated uh, and deflated after that foul he gave up yep. moments ago. Yeah, but uh, tried to, you know, uh, sort of been credit against Spalding for not conceding that play. Both him and uh, Dengadel chasing the play down from behind. Could be the play of his life. And for Spalding to hang in there and pick up the loose change on the iron, crucial. Louisville's largest lead was 13. And we mentioned the last time Virginia had a lead at the 1809 mark of the first half. Well, a reminder, the New York Life ACC Tournament, just five days away. If you're loving this, boy, you're gonna love that. We start it next Tuesday, March 6th, at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. We'll be broadcasting all 14 games, including the championship game, on Saturday night. So be sure to mark it down on your calendar. It's the New York Life ACC Tournament. My colleagues, Wes Durham, Dan Bonner, Corey Alexander, Tom Wormy, Jason Capel, all in attendance. We look forward to spending our little fortnight, if you will, in Brooklyn. Um, and right now, uh, Dave Padgett going a little offense for defense, putting Mahmoud back in the ball game. It could be a rim protector. Something to consider if we go an extra session tonight, Mike, is foul difficulty for a lot of guys, especially along the front line of Louisville. Mahmoud is out there with four. Yeah, I mean, if Mahmoud is with Snyder, I'd be you know, with uh, Isaiah Wilkins, pull him out and get him some screen roll action, get him away from the basket. Under 10 to shoot. Jerome will initiate. Hall on a blow by. And now Hunter drives baseline. And the traffic offensive foul. Wow, Dang Adele stepping up. What a beautiful play. Again, Louisville doing to Virginia what they normally do to others. Yeah, just the anticipation. They had gotten my mood away, but Dang, despite the baseline dribble, able to get there in plenty of time. Dang Adele, great game for him tonight. Louisville has in many ways maxed out. And you have to if you're going to beat this Virginia team because the, the fight and grit is always there. Well, if you can, and he's long right now, the guy you can foul and have to foul is Spalding. Conversation taking place again about where the ball should be entered, I gather. That's all that really could be being discussed. Adele at 78%. I'm a little surprised that Spalding isn't isn't the one taking the ball inbounds. Yes, well, it will be Adele. Virginia's going to take a timeout. We'll try to figure this out. A lot of conversation going on at the scores table. Maybe we can figure it out for you. Well, our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. And we'll give it to the senior on senior night, Clinton Snyder, with his 13. Ty Jerome, his effort in the second half has allowed Virginia a chance to come back. Well, 
And, and actually, they, they, now the, the Louisville coaches thought that originally that a full timeout had been called for. Mike Eats going over and saying, no, that was uh, just a 30 second right. timeout. Well, he showed you those banners in the American flag where the 2013 banner once flew that was taken down within the last few now, days. Now they got, uh, they're got they going to play center field, not having any pressure on the ball. McMahon got it. Pretty good idea. He's a good yeah. shooter. Well, and a nice job by McMahon of making himself available 91% from the line. Well, how about it if this kid could come in on senior night? Granted, he's not one of them, but to help his upperclassmen as a redshirt sophomore out of Cardinal Mooney, Sarasota, Florida, what it would mean to this kid. And he's more than just a shooter. He's he's learned how to and and really gotten stronger. He's able to defend a little bit better and facilitate. Just as we mentioned, what a great free throw shooter he is. The old television jinx comes into play. And even if he makes this, Tim, and it's a three-point ball game, still enough time, I think, to go for a quick two if you're Virginia. You don't have to go for the three right away. Well, he's upset with himself. He knows he could have made it a two-possession game. B.J. King checks in for him right now. Defense for offense. They're on their feet at the KFC Yum Center. Number one at stake for Virginia. All the way, Jerome. Foul. Yep. Got what he wanted. Take it to the 10, and at the very least, get to the line. And Tim, only six and a half seconds come off the clock that time. Spalding with his fourth foul. And so the ideal thing happens, ideally, it would have been a three-point play the old-fashioned way, but the clock stops, and you get another good free throw shooter at the line. He misses. Wow. A couple of shockers. Another 90% free throw shooter that comes up empty at the line. Wow, you throw all those stats out, out the window with under a minute in a game like this. It's one of the two, and it's a two-point game again. And they're going to do the same thing, not defend the inbounds pass. Yeah, you have to foul. Ooh, Hunter almost got a deflection. Yeah. Instead, picked up the foul, and it's McMahon again that will go to the line. Three on DeAndre Hunter. So now it's almost like a uh, it's almost like a de facto timeout timeout for Dave Padgett. He's got everybody. There's nobody on the line with McMahon. McMahon had made 14 foul shots in a row before his last miss at Miami on January 24th, but he just missed a moment ago, and he missed again. Wow. Well, once again, the best thing he can do is keep it at three, which. Uh, Allows Virginia to shoot for the top. And then based on that last drive, still time to play the extend game, not put pressure to make the three. You know, if I'm, it's a tough, it's a tough line. If I'm, you know, if I'm Louisville, I'm going to pressure up a little bit, make some time run off. The rag, clock. rag the ball, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Rag the, the ball and make sure that they use clock coming up the floor. And have somebody spy it maybe a little bit. Fake run and jump. Jerome being checked by Darius Perry. Nice move by Guy against Spalding. Stays with it, leans in, nothing doing. Loose ball and it's taken away by Louisville. Spalding had it and the foul committed. And Tony Bennett is leaving. First look, it was a, that was a great switch off, but then uh, then guy coming back and I think they I think they just set a play on right there based on the fact I might have gotten his shoulder into him a little bit. Devin Hall did pick up the foul, and now Spalding can make it a two possession game. Yeah, we'll see his story at the line tonight. And he's, he's the worst three he's the worst free throw shooter out on the floor and steps up and makes that one calmly. 
Well, 62% on the year. This could be Louisville's crowning achievement of the season, punching themselves in that large bid in the NCAAs. Jerome, yes, it's not done yet. 6.1 remaining and a two-point game. Well, I, I called them out at halftime, and uh, Hall and Guy and Jerome have really stepped up, especially Ty Jerome. 19 points out in that game. How about that play? That's just toughness. Incredible toughness and a willingness to put it on your shoulders and make it happen at the end. Oh, key thing, key thing for Louisville, and they've done a nice job up to this point, obviously getting the ball in first, but they do have a timeout in their back pocket. So they, you know, with, uh, right now Virginia out of timeouts, but if, if somebody, if the inbounder for Louisville feels like he's in trouble, he doesn't have to force something. We talk about important wins and building a resume. Not as if Louisville wasn't already in good shape. They were, but this could be the housekeeping seal of approval as you look at our game reset. Possession arrow is to Virginia, and that's critical in a tie ball situation. Well, the thing is, now, if it's better, he can run. Now, if they call a timeout, he can't. Perry got it. And he's quickly fouled by Jerome. Well, the next best thing, now Perry is another plus 90% free throw shoot. Free. But, Tim, he's a freshman. Yeah, and he's not, he's only shot, when you think about it, 30 times at the free throw line this year. And for the bulk of the season, that's not a lot. And this is certainly a very big moment with 5.8 remaining. You know, they're, they're, Louisville's just fortunate they've been in the double bonus Absolutely. where they've had a chance to at least get a point out of it. No doubt. That's one. And one more. And they'll beat number one. Perry's first points of the night. Six sixty-two. Jerome going the distance, looking for a quick three. There was a foul. Oh, he, there was a foul. There was a foul from beyond the arc. Oh, uh, and it was it was Perry who did it. Wow. Well, he was be, obviously instructed to do it. Yeah, he's going to. It's going to be three shots, but still with one second to go. Well, I, I don't know that he was. Dave Paget didn't look real happy about you, that you play. Could, but here's what you could do, Mike, with point nine left, and they make no. it more time. You could make the first two, this miss the really third, really and then really tap it in. Yeah. Offensive rebound, tap in. And they're going to come in with Jay Huff. Wow. At seven one. This is one of the reasons why well, a lot of coaches if, would never foul. But if, if, right he is, if he doesn't foul, I and mean, then the shot goes through, the shot clock expires That's with, right. with 29 seconds. Yep. That ball hadn't even left his hand. That's got to be something that you practice, and you practice a lot. A number of coaches would say, I'd never do it because I really haven't had time to delegate to it. But, right. I, but I, I gotta believe he was instructed to foul. And now, now, my, now Dave Padgett counters by getting my mood in. So this is what has to happen: a high arc well, shot and, and it's not, off the back yeah, iron. And, and it's not just the two inside guys that have to hang in there too. It's the two guys up the lane as well for Louisville. Keep an eye on Diakite. High arching whistle. We have well, a lane violation. It goes the other way. Ball game. Diakite snuck in too quickly. And that should do it. All Louisville's got to do is see Diakite run it right away, number 25, and that's a violation. I might throw it high and long to Mr. <laughs> Spaulding. And say, Mr. Spaulding. Hey, yes, have fun. Over towards the Louisville Slugger plant, yes. right? So long, Mr. Don't, Spaulding. Don't give, don't give Virginia any chance at all to get the ball in this side of the half court. 26 and two, Virginia, 15 and one. Their only loss at home to rival Virginia Tech. They were 8-0 in the ACC on the road, but they have run into an emotion-charged senior night team that has uh, outplayed them really at their own game. And we get oh, a 
five it seconds. No, it's no, he ran. He ran. He, he ran the travel. baseline. Yep. He moved on the baseline. Oh my goodness! You could not run the baseline there, and he moved, and that's a travel. It was it was pointed out to him. You got, you got to know you can't yeah. do that. And the officials instruct them right before they yeah, hand them the you, ball. When you see him point down to the floor, that means that indicates you can't move. Now at .9 seconds. Oh, you can throw it to the rim. Well, you could, you can do, no, you, there's time. There's enough time for a catch and shoot. Or you could find, if, if you've got an alley-oop play out of bounds in your well, scouting this, report, now, let's now, take a look. Now this is the, uh, and the referees are going to talk about I don't know if they're going to look at if the clock moved at all. <laughs> the game but, that would never end. Now here's here's the decision. Do you go for the tie or do you go for the win? Oh, I think you go for the tie. <laughs> you know, you're I'm, you're the number I'm, one team in the country. I'm, you're I'm, on the road. See, I'm I'm I've always been of the opinion minus foul trouble that when you're on the road you go for the win. Oh, look, they're looking at the clock now. You see. That moment it, he it traveled. Didn't, it didn't bend it, but it didn't move. It did not move. So it was, a, you know, it was a dead ball, so there was no reason. I think they're going to do something attacking the basket, Mike. But we'll see. We'll see. Jerome's got to get it in. It's Hunter for three. You called it. A bank. It's open late, and Virginia wins number one and holding. Can you believe it? I, I believe anything that happens in this league this year. Well, I applaud Tony Bennett. Uh, I've, I'm heart sick for Louisville, who played a great game, and the seniors. But how about this? North Carolina, the same thing happened. Yeah. Look at this. The Hunters struggled all game long. It's only his second field goal made. On a bank with .9. Oh, the bank open late for DeAndre Hunter and the Cavaliers in Louisville, Kentucky. Wow. And they talk about, well, the other things, NC State loses tonight to Georgia Tech, so they had it all right there to pull that game off. That's a remarkable win. Pageant and company dropped to nine and eight in the league, 19 and 11 overall. Virginia 27 and two, six 